SOT Mobitel Fiber, the fiber of the nation. SOT Mobitel Fiber, the fiber of the nation. Comfort Moody and Bagi I Kalak Pavatina Alu Penuai. Tonight, high hopes. The BOI chairman reveals his wish list for an investor-friendly budget 2022. So it is not about throwing a quick bone in terms of tax, but getting the enable part of it right. And important thing is we need to put that foundation for development. So what we need is the smart taxes, because at the end of the day, we have to keep abreast in terms of our tax collection. Coming down, inflation levels in September recorded a drop, including in food and non-food categories. Parliamentary chaos, JVP questions government nano-fertilizer payment methods, while ITAC parliamentarian complains of bullying tactics. Shouted at them saying Kotia, Trastavadi, LTTE and both members had to walk out saying, well, if that is what you want, that is what you will have. Normalization. All primary schools island wide to reopen on Monday under phase two of the Education Ministry program. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine. This Friday, the 22nd of October, 2021. Kiel Smart Family Season 4. From Ada Verana, this is Ada Verana First at Nine. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammik Eknaik. Now there are high hopes for Budget 2022, which is set to be presented in Parliament next month. As the country seeks a further relaxation of pandemic restrictions and some measure of normalisation of economic activity, the government's plan to attract investment remains high on the list of key priorities. Speaking at a forum yesterday, Chairman of the Board of Investment, Sanjay Mohotala, offered his opinion on what he would like to see in the budget for investors, while saying that he would expect it to not veer too far away from its current policy trajectory. Mohotala says that it would be better if it foregoes short-term gratification for stability and a strong foundation for development. With global foreign direct investments having fallen by 40% in 2020, according to the UN Conference on Trade and Development, Sri Lanka's push to attract more investment seems to be a tougher proposition than we expected. With the UN report also saying that despite there being room for improvement next year, prospects are still uncertain due to slow pandemic economic recovery and some countries still lagging behind in vaccination programs. In this backdrop, Sri Lanka's Budget 2022, which is set to be presented next month by Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa, is probably one of the most eagerly anticipated in Sri Lanka's parliamentary history. With hope singeing on the government's ability to attract foreign investment, that is to shore up its shaky current account balance, the budget 2022 is expected to set out a master plan for this. Board of Investment Chairman Sanjay Mohotala says that he doesn't expect much deviation from its current trajectory, but instead may offer reinforcement in terms of the policy stability that was promised. Now, I don't think the budget is going to change the direction, but in the overall goal of the country where it is right now is to get the policies right for this country to double its GDP in 10 years. Now, that is something fundamentally we need to do at this point, and the budget needs to reinforce, and I really look forward to for that reinforcement. Because from 2014, 2015 onwards, 2020, we have been around the 79 to $85 billion chasm. We've been around $4,000 per capita GDP. Unless we get the right policy structures, and that is what is needed, but unless you do that foundation now, as a country, when it is at a crucial point around $4,000 per capita GDP, we're not going to come in out. So that's why the whole philosophy and the policy around the 10-year plan in terms of which sectors to focus on, how do you double the GDP, and then it's about getting those enabling factors in a budget. So it is not about throwing a quick bone in terms of tax or whichever it is, but getting the enable part of it right. And important thing is we need to put that foundation for development. We addressed 
pharmaceuticals and uh, apparels last year. Why not about all the new minerals, new opportunities around the resources that we have, which we have not ne necessarily tapped, but it's a good time to tap. Graphene is really coming up, electronics coming up. How do we really leapfrog? So I would like to see, and I hope to see, that cohesiveness in terms of the thrust, the development, and the supporting infrastructure, supporting industries to come in and provide the base in terms of the policies to be able to hold this up. So that's how I look at it. And if that happens, then of course, FTI would be at the door. Montilla also expresses hope for more focus on the tourism industry, with not only relief to prop struggling operators up, but with more government policy to enable the industry to regenerate and recoup. He explained that the tourism industry needs to be prepared to face the expected revenge travel wave as more countries open up. The tourism is a great example. Right? But the problem what we have is an expensive product because our factor costs are expensive. But we need to look at and see how coming out of this pandemic, the revenge travel is going to be there. Right? So if you look at, we are getting almost 6,000 tourists every three days or two days. So that's about 3,000 a day. So which is good. So what we need to make sure that tourism sector is propped up. So giving relief, which has been very badly hit, and also enabling those industries to regenerate, recoup, and also step up. And I think that's most important. I think the most enabling factors, what I look for is deregularization. So there's been a committee being appointed. There have been some policies being talked about. There's a judiciary committee for customs. So I would like to see the recommendations being pushed and pushed in an aggressive way. Because the foundation, when you act today, it's not a magic wand. It's not, you're not going to see the fruits tomorrow. It's three, four, five years, or maybe it's longer. But we got to get it started quickly because it's like a snowball, right? So if you get the right momentum, it only gathers and it becomes bigger. So we need to now get out of the pandemic mindset and say, look, okay, how do I catch up the two years that I lost in terms of getting to our objective of juggling our GDP? What are the things that really matters in terms of moving the needle within the budgetary and the physical discipline that we need to have and in the room that we have in terms of making? We, we don't have a country in terms of throwing in helicopter money. The planning that and executing it, executing well, timely, and in a decisive manner. So that's what I look for in terms of policy. Further, Mohotala also called for the implementation of a smart tax system, which he says will be the only way Sri Lanka can sort out its irregular collection system. Today, the business can be structured in multiple ways. You can have a tolling operation in Sri Lanka. So even if I have a tax regime to tax the profit of a company, if it's a tolling operation, you have nothing much to tax. You can have an IT company, and the billing can happen in Ireland, so you, we paid for the salaries. So what are we taxing? So what we need, the smart taxes. Because at the end of the day, as the economy expands, we have to keep abreast in terms of our tax collection, which we have not done. And I think, look, uh, that's the truth. We cannot continue to do that. Million of the heart I dash at the universe. Laksha Pahak Giva, then my win Kravaganda, Malbury Residence. Now, September recorded a dip across inflation indices, including in the food and non-food categories, with low prices reported in some food items and other products. Year-on-year -year food inflation dropped to 10% in the month from 11.1% in August. Headline inflation in September measured by the year-on-year -year change in the National Consumer Price Index decreased to 6.2% from 6.7% in August, attributed to the statistical effect of the high base in September 2020. Meanwhile, year-on-year -year food inflation decreased to 10% in September 2021 from 11.1% in August 2021, while year-on-year non-food inflation remained unchanged at 3% for September. The National Consumer Price Index measured on an annual average basis stayed unchanged at 5.5% in September. Further, the monthly change in the NCPI was recorded at 0.25% in September due to increases observed in prices of both food and non-food items. Moreover, monthly changes in the food and non-food categories were recorded at 0.07% and 0.18% respectively. Further, year-on-year co-inflation increased to 4.8% in September 2021 from 4.7% in August 2021, while annual average co-inflation remained unchanged for the sixth consecutive month at 4.4% in September. If you want terrorists and the LTTE, you'll have it, had been the response of two Tamil parliamentarians today during the consultative committee meeting of the Ministry of Forests and Wildlife when they had been called the same by government MPs. 
This was revealed by Lange Tamil Arasukachi MP M. A. Sumandiran in Parliament, who went on to allege that the fisheries minister is paid protection money by local trawler operators in the north to continue the harmful practice of bottom trawling. Meanwhile, the JVP also raised concerns over how the government paid for the liquid nitrogen fertilizer imports from India during today's parliamentary sitting. When the adjournment motion was said to be presented in Parliament by Chairman of the Committee of Public Enterprises, Dr. Charita Herat, the opposition launched a remonstration within the chamber pertaining to the fertilizer issue. Despite the opposition protests, the parliamentary proceedings moved forward, with JVP MP Vijita Herath questioning the method of payment used by the government to pay for the liquid nitrogen fertilizer from India. Nano nitrogen genmim sandaha, India nu goviange pohor sampakar samagama, api lanka veng mudal gevala tin. Me mudal gevu pu krame mukat, tu lanka pohor samagama harahatamai, India nu samagama te mudal gevi utuin. Namute mukakpat netu, PB Jayasundar Mahatpe udi medihatela. Mahajar Bank itu niaga kerana apa? Wena ma pahut gelik a ginu mak Mahajar Bank itu e town hall sahka diurutkan kerana ke? Muka deh Mahajar Bank itu e diurutkan kerana sahka wena ma United Farmers Trust Limited Account. Eksat govi aramudala samagam kila samagamak eka paharata dah hati wenida mo patangan. Eka maharupu budu ma ratak. Deh Mahajar Bank itu e sally pahut gelik a samagamak itu transakar. Dollar milliona eka ida sama dekai pahai hatak. Rupiah leling gatot bisina ma court e tis delak sya. Ektra ma gatot court e bisina meng wedan kerla tienne. Nama kotori visi laksa. Nah kotori visi kotori dolar selaksa panas dah. Rupiah lebaring kat tuh megi nu mati nu. Tapi men town hall sa town hall mahajer men ku sahka abe. Pudgelik denne ki gini mak pujur tak kerla. Raja aramudal mah mahajer men ku hara. Me parlimen tu dah ni netu. Mami sah sekar no cabinet pan lewat dah ni mek kila. Kau mau tu me ganu tu nuin ni. Ewi terak ni me me director sa denna. Dah hat men ni dham mahajer men ku digin digat me ilim kerno a. Itu ru sal litik a rupiah lebaring kat parivar tanek kerana. इंडिया तानापति कार्यालय हरा इतनी इफ़को कि है ना इंडिया राज्य समागमक तमाई में गिविसो में टेल मिलाती है ने में में समाग में नियोजित है ठीक है यूनाइटेड फार्मर्स की है ना लंका भी देशीय समागम नाम कर लेती है ना ये आनु ये आये तमाई में टेंडर के में इधर पे प्रपोजल लगे इधर बात कर लेती है ना मुदल के वाले भी नहीं क्वांटिटी के वांड एक वाला ना मुदला गिवान दो ना मुदला गिवान ने याना कोटे मुलिंग सीलंकर न्यायालय इन समाग्र बकी हुआ मेट्रिक टोन पनास पंद्रह क्लेन ने के गेन न बुलवां किया ला नमूद एलसीआर इन्द बैंकों टक गया था पास या पिसाली ट्रांसफर करा था पासे दाना करते मेट्रिक टोन विषय बंद आपने यह फ्रेड कराना पुलवां किया ये अनुवा ये दुन्ना मुदल गाने के प्रमाण है कि समाग्र में तुरला तीनों में ही लॉजिस्टिक्स सह एसीएल उदेश्य दा ये एक गिवंडों ने इंडिया राज्य समाग्र में खराब में आना है ने करला द पोहर वाला किसी दुवांचा वक्त सिद्ध लाने during the proceedings, PM of the Lankai Tamil Arasukachi MP Sumantiran raised some issues related to the environment. But before that, he had this to say. This morning at the consultative committee meeting of the Ministry of Forests and Wildlife, my colleagues, Honorable Sridharan and Honorable Shanakian Rasamanikam were present at that meeting and tried to raise certain issues of which Honorable Rasamanikam had given prior notice and was part of the agenda. The Honorable Minister presided, but they were not allowed to raise those matters and members of parliament who were present there from the government benches shouted that down shouted at them saying Kotiya, Trastavadi, LTTE and both members had to walk out saying well if that is what you want that is what you will have this is a most unfortunate incident afterwards MP Sumantiran raised the intended environmental issues one is the marine environment, particularly in the northern seas, about which we staged a protest a few days ago, a procession in the sea. Because there is a practice of using bottom trawlers in that area. Bottom trawling completely destroys the marine environment. It scrapes off the seabed with corals, everything in it. And most of what it scrapes off, about 80 to 90 percent, are thrown away because they are of no use. This causes serious environmental pollution, not just for us now, but more for succeeding generations. We will not have any fish. Act number. 11 of 2017 which amended the Fisher, Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Act uh, making bottom trawling an offence. Now this was done after high level consultations with the government of India. 
I'm saying this because there is a plural attempt to make this protest as something that was done against India. That's far from the truth. I have with me, which I place, which I will table now, a joint statement issued on the ministerial level talks on fishermen issues between India and Sri Lanka, dated 5th of November 2016, at which I participated. And the first matter, it says, I'll read it. I quote, expediting the transition towards ending the practice of bottom trawling at the earliest. So it was agreed between the two countries that the practice of bottom trawling must end at the earliest as far back as November 2016. The other matter that I want to raise is sand mining that is going on in both the north and the eastern provinces. Honorable Rasmanikam who is here has raised this issue about the sand mafia in the east. Now in the north also in Mana, in Klinochi, in Baunia, in Mulatibu and even in Jaffna. Two days ago I was present in Point Pedro in Udaya Kadirgamam and I witnessed with my own eyes illegal sand mining happening on private land and the owners of those lands are scared to even put their heads out of the window in their houses because they get threatening calls. When they call the police, the police give their numbers to the sand miners and the sand miners in turn and call them and say why did you complain to the police don't you have a daughter we know the time you come back from work this is open daylight robbery that is happening with the connivance of the police and I personally witnessed it just two days ago this is something that cannot be allowed this must stop even with regard to bottom trawling and I'll finish with that there are local trawlers almost 500 there is a law that has been passed the Ministry of Fisheries must enforce that law it has been reported that the local trawlers each of the trawlers pay 5,000 rupees, I'm concluding sir, 5,000 rupees per boat, per night to the minister's protection money. And that is why it is being permitted to go on and this must end. We will see you shortly. Stay with us. Big three. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, health experts are calling on the public not to rest on their laurels in the midst of dipping Delta variant cases as the threat of new variants still exists. With recent reports of the emergence of the variant Delta Plus in dozens of countries, which has been found to be 10% more transmissible than its predecessor, virologists are saying that it could emerge in Sri Lanka out of the blue and doesn't need to be physically brought into the country by an infected patient. With the Delta variant on the dip in Sri Lanka, with daily cases below the 600 mark, it can be easy for people to start taking it easy and slack off on the health and safety precautions when out and about in public. However, health experts are saying that this needs to change and the public needs to take extra care following the recent detection of another new variant. A sub-variant of the Delta strain identified as the Delta Plus has been gaining the attention of health experts, although not much is known about it especially how differently it may behave. Even though the new variant has been reported in 27 countries, health authorities say that from what they know currently, so far it has only shown a slightly higher transmissibility rate than its predecessor. When Delta Plus came out, it was a very spike protein level. It was a very high 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 level. It was a transmissibility. It was a very high level. 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 Speaking further on the matter, Dr. Jayamaha explained that the new variants don't necessarily need to be brought in from another country for it to be shown up in Sri Lanka. Further, Dr. Jayamaha then went on to explain the effectiveness of vaccines against variant strains. मैं डेल्टा प्लस वाले इधर आने में डेल्टा प्रभेद ये टप आवा जनरल दिन एन्नत और उत्तु देना तो ये किंतु ये क्या ना सकसंका पावेशिका नारका इन अदर डेवलपमेंट्स 
head of the National Operations Center for the Prevention of COVID-19, Army Commander General Shavindra Silva, announced today that the interprovincial travel restrictions would be lifted at 4 a.m. on the 31st of October. Even though Sri Lanka lifted its travel restrictions on the 1st of October, interprovincial travel had not been permitted. Initially, the restrictions were due to be lifted yesterday. However, a decision was taken to extend it until the end of the month. Meanwhile, Minister of Transport Pavitra Devi Vanyarachi announced today that the train services for season ticket holders within the Western Province will resume from the 25th of October. Interprovincial train services, however, have been scheduled to resume from the 1st of November. Meanwhile, with the country slowly heading towards a possible full normalization, the disinfection of public spaces has become a common sight, especially in schools. However, health experts say that there is no scientific basis to back this up. ुद्ध the chief of the National Operations Center for the Prevention of COVID-19 announced today the decision to begin administering booster doses from the 1st of November. The decision was taken when the Special Committee on COVID-19 Control met and after chairman of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation reassured that enough Pfizer vaccine doses are available for the rollout. As of last evening, 59% of Sri Lanka's total population had been fully vaccinated. In numbers, that's 12,932,536 people. The global consensus is that any country which fully vaccinates over 70% of its total population can bring the virus under control. Sri Lanka could well achieve that once the 12 to 19s are also immunized. The vaccination of 18 to 19 age group went island-wide yesterday and the vaccination of 16 to 17 age group also did so today. The Ministry of Education said that 60% of 18- and 19-year-old students in the Piliandala, Sri Jayavardhanapura, Homagama and Colombo educational zones are already inoculated. Speaking at the Special Committee on COVID-19 Control, the Director General of Health Services gave an update on the progress made on the child vaccine drive. <laughs> During the meeting, State Pharmaceuticals Corporation Chairman Dr. Prasanna Gunasena said that Sri Lanka has enough Pfizer vaccine doses to roll out booster shots as well. Pfizer vaccine is 2.1 million. November March is a little bit of a May Labana Sati, Lapsa Tunakut, Ek, Pita Atipama vaccine, Metana Tiana, Lamai in time, boost negative healthcare workers, frontline negative, then to take a do not function in November, Agavenako, Apita, Sanjar Guapa, Patangan Villa, Venako, Apia, Strengthen Villa, Tiakilitan. As such, head of the National Operations Center for the Prevention of COVID 19, Army Commander General Shavindra Silva said that during the meeting it was decided to roll out booster doses from the 1st of November. Now, the Minister of Education says that the overall percentage of teacher attendance in schools saw a marginal reduction today in comparison to yesterday. Meanwhile, the government has decided to reopen all primary schools in the country, respective of student capacity, on Monday the 25th. Following a month-long pandemic-induced hiatus, primary schools with less than 200 students resumed island-wide yesterday under the Ministry of Education's first phase. However, the reopening has been hampered by strike action launched by teacher and principal trade unions that have not participated in online classes for the past 100 days. When plans were announced by the Education Ministry to resume schools yesterday, unions, however, decided to stay away and only resume duties on Monday the 25th. Today, some schools saw students and teachers in attendance. However, at others, attendance was less than satisfactory. Releasing the overall provincial attendance percentages today, the Ministry of Education noted a marginal difference in the attendance, including teachers, compared to yesterday. Accordingly, the overall teachers' attendance was reported at 25% today, whereas it was 26% yesterday. However, student attendance remained at the same levels with an overall percentage of 16%. 
Meanwhile, as per recommendations made by the Special Committee on COVID-19, the government has decided to resume schools for students of grade 1 to 5 in all schools across the island on Monday the 25th in the second phase. The decision was arrived at during the weekly meeting of the Special Committee on COVID-19 today, presided over by President Gotabe Rajapaksa. In the meantime, in line with the government's decision, the Archdiocese of Colombo has decided to reopen the primary section of Catholic schools island-wide on Monday as well. What's more, responding to media questions, Deputy Director of Education and Research at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Hemant Tehirat said that sending children to school is very important despite any risks. Apita Darwanga Hakikmaning Pasalevimi Vedagatkamati. Anna E Vedagatkama Salakala. Apita Yamkisi Abadana Maganiming Hari. May Pasalota Lamung Yavi may Kriavalieta Avatir Neven the Siddhavino. Ada Ariot Vada Hondai Hete Ariot Ita Vada Hondai Kinek Tirnekar and that bear. Make Pasal Saha Palate Sauke Vidinladari Nekusaka Chakarala. Tiena Avadana Matino Nang Eva Niver the Karaganda Vashaka Vedipidula Sakaskaraganiming. Daruanta Duma Avadanam King Yutu, a parcel Laragani, a Kriavali, a parcel Mataming Kriat Makalayutu, Hemanatu, Rataketi, a Pudui, a Pita Mithening, Kalayutu, the Nokalayutu, the Konda, the Naraka, the Kineka, Mangitanaki, and Amaru. Now then, Sri Lanka's stocks closed at a fresh all-time high, gaining for a fifth straight session today as the SBI edged up closer towards the 10,000 point benchmark closing at 9,900 points with a gain of 33.72 points. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks gained 33.02 points to close at 3,605.72. Now with that, here's the Mathematic Matthew with a brief report of today's market performance. Today we saw the market bull run continuing for the fifth consecutive day as the index crossed the 9,900 mark strong retail activity is present in the market and we are seeing 37,000 transactions during the day which is continuing to be on to the high side yet again we are seeing a gradual increase in turnover levels and today we are seeing 4.4 billion rupees of turnover with increased investor interest over the last five days <music> And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.